Welcome to this guided tour of Furuno's BR500 Bridge Navigation Watch Alarm System. In this video, we're going to introduce you to what a BNWA system is, what it does, who is required to fit them on their vessels, and then we'll go into some of the operation and the sequences that the BR500 will follow. What a BNWA system is, is essentially a countdown timer that is interfaced with other equipment on the boat. More crudely put, a BNWA system is a dead man alarm. In the management of a bridge of any commercial vessel, a watch stander will be performing certain functions, and what BN WAS is looking for is referred to simply as operator fitness. When a watch stander operates a radar or an ectus, checks a chart, moves around the bridge or the wheelhouse, these are all activities that constitute operator fitness, meaning that there's a watch stander awake, alert, and doing his job. When the operator interfaces with some of this equipment, when that equipment is interfaced with BN WAS, then the countdown timer will reset, which avoids the need for the operator to constantly be interacting with the BN WAS system. So the BR500 BN WAS system sits in the background and monitors certain signal inputs. And if operator fitness is compromised somehow, if a man goes overboard or if leaves the bridge for a period of time and the timer counts out, then it will generate a series of alarms, first on the bridge and then in the living spaces of the vessel to alert the crew that there's a problem on the bridge. The implementation dates for BN WASP began in July of 2011 for new passenger and cargo vessels. Implementation dates for existing vessels will continue through July 2014. While the BR500 is designed to meet IMO carriage requirements, many non-compliant vessels can benefit from this product and its features, including commercial fishing fleets, small commercial vessels, and larger recreational boats. For complete information regarding the implementation dates for BN WASP, check out our website at www.farunausa.com. Now let's look at the components of the BR500 system, and then we'll try to translate those into installation on the boats. And we'll see each function that each of these pieces of the BR500 puzzle perform. The basic set of a BR500 is, you'll see here, the BR510 main alarm panel, and a processor that comprised the basic system. There are a couple of advantages to that layout that we'll talk about a little bit later. In addition to the main alarm panel, you can see a couple of examples of options here. We have a timer reset panel. There's also a waterproof option, and we'll talk about installation of those. Here we also have a cabin panel or cabin alarm panel, the BR540, which would be installed either in staterooms or in common areas of the vessel when we look at the alarm sequencing. In addition to these options, we have what's called a flash beacon, which is an additional visual alarm to be installed on the bridge in the initial alarm stage. And after that, we also have a motion detector, which generally is installed in the upper bulkhead or the ceiling of the vessel, which will monitor movement of the bridge. Now, when we look at the layout on the bridge of a vessel, it's important to understand that there are some key requirements of where these different system components are installed. We'll have the main alarm panel installed in the bridge console, generally along with one reset button. And it's important to note also that there is a reset button on the main alarm panel. Another reset button generally will be installed at or close to the chart table. And the requirement is that that button be installed within 45 degrees of thwartships of the vessel so that you can maintain visual uh, cognizance of where the vessel is oriented. In addition to the reset buttons in the bridge console and, in the, and at the chart table, it's required that reset buttons be accessible from the bridge wings. This doesn't mean that the buttons have to be installed in the bridge wings. However, we do offer waterproof reset buttons if outside installation is required. In addition to its functions purely as a BN WAS system, when the BR500 is in its basic operating mode, which is actually considered off, it can be used as an enunciator to call watch officers or other officers to the bridge. So it does fulfill more than one function. So now let's talk about some of the operating states of the BR500 and how it does its job. It's important to note that the BR500 main alarm panel does not have a power button. The BR500 gets its power from its processor and it's always on. 
it has provided both AC and DC power for power redundancy. When we look at the true operating states of the BR500, there are three. One is referred to as manual off, there's manual on, and auto. In the manual off state, the countdown timer is disabled. And this would be, an example of this condition would be when the vessel's in port. The requirement is that the system be in countdown mode only when the vessel's at sea. In the manual on state, this is essentially on all the time. So the countdown timer will be operating on an interval to be selected by the vessel master or the bridge crew of an interval between 3 minutes and 12 minutes. Minimum of 3, maximum of 12. In the auto state, the auto state is monitoring connection with either a track pilot or an autopilot. And in this case, when the autopilot is providing commands to the steering gear of the vessel, in that case, the BNWA system will reset. So those are the three operating modes. Now let's look at the alarm sequences and what some of the visual indicators will be in the vessel. Now, the BNWAS performance standards mandate a certain flow of the alarm sequence. We have a visual alarm, a first stage audible, second stage audible, and third stage audible alarm. So we'll give you a little example of this when our countdown timer goes off. So we've set our timer now at three minutes, and as we begin to approach zero seconds, we'll see our timer countdown, and when the timer comes to zero, we'll begin the initial alarm sequence, beginning with the visual sequence. As the timer runs out and goes to black, we will initially get a pre-warning watch alarm. We have a yellow light flashing on both the main alarm panel and on our reset panel, which would normally again be installed in the bridge console and the chart table. This pre-warning lasts for 15 seconds. In the first stage alarm, we have an audible alarm that is on the bridge only. This alarm is sounding in the BR510 main alarm panel, and at this point, we can reset the alarm from the reset panel. As we enter the second stage, the second stage alarm alarms both on the bridge and with the backup officer. This alarm is selectable between 90 and 180 seconds. At this point, we cannot reset the system from the reset button. The system has to be reset only from the main alarm panel. Now, as we come up on the end of the second stage alarm, we'll proceed to the third stage alarm. We can hear the alarm change tone, and at this point, the alarm will sound on the bridge in the main alarm panel, in the cabin panel, in the backup officer's stateroom, and in all common areas. And again, at the third stage, the reset can only be performed by approaching the main alarm panel and hitting the reset button. Now we'd also like to point out some of the really unique features of the BR500 that makes it stand apart and we believe above some of the competition. One is the main alarm panel itself. It has a brilliant color display with adjustable dimming for both the color display and the keypad. So in terms of maintaining night vision for the watch stander, it's very, very adjustable. In addition to this, with our cabin panels and our reset buttons, these are actually have lights with adjustable brilliance on them as well. So while the cabin panel is required for the backup officer, the light can be dimmed to the extent that it doesn't interfere with a, a, a backup officer's sleep cycle. In addition to these advantages, one great advantage we feel is that the main alarm panel and the processor are actually separated, making for a very easy installation. If we look at a standard bridge console, they tend to get fairly packed with equipment. And so having a remote processor where we bring in power, we bring in our cabin panel feeds, we bring in the interfacing from other pieces of equipment that will send operator fitness alerts, having that remote processor is very easy so that we're not trying to wire everything in a very cramped bridge console. So in summary, Furuno's BR500 BNWA system offers a robust, compact, scalable solution for your BNWAS requirements. We offer a very affordable, basic system with the options and accessories that will enable a ship owner with vessels of any size to create a system exactly according to your needs that fulfill both the basic BNWAS requirements and some other nice features, such as a selective call for a backup officer. We'd like to thank you for watching our video today. If you have any additional questions about the BR500 or BNWAS systems, 
We're Furuno's entire family of products. We'd like to invite you to visit www.furunousa.com.